Hello, everybody. This is Stefan from New York. Uh, it's always interesting to talk uh, to my favorite partner these days, my laptop. But uh, I can see some smiling faces in the background. Um, can I get some signs of whether you can actually hear me? I see some nodding. That is real human interaction across many, many different time zones. Because I did have some difficulties launching, um, I get a thumbs up. So I think we can communicate with, um, with all the difficulties uh, that we are having. Um, so the mute and unmute button have become the most important features in our life. And I was struggling a little bit with that this morning, but apparently our wonderful people um, in the background uh, responsible for the uh, technicalities have helped us one more time. So I see the numbers are climbing. We are over 100 participants already. Um, thank you very much for connecting. I'm, I'm very excited. This is a, a real appetizer for the Statistical Commission meeting itself. Um, this is the time slot that we will be using from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. New York time. I really apologize again to all our friends in Asia and in particular in the Pacific because we were not able to get uh, conference services at any other time slot. Um, conference services, of course, including interpretation, which is critically important for this event, uh, for the forthcoming 52, 52nd session of the Statistical Commission. So um, let's settle in. Uh, today we wanted to provide you with some further updates. Uh, we had a similar a chat about a month ago, putting out the panorama of how the Commission would work. Um, this is now the second such very informal chat. And the most important thing is that we give enough space for your questions and addressing any kind of concerns or issues that you may have. So we will make a short presentation. Uh, my colleague um, Linda Hooper, who is of course tirelessly working uh, to uh, to make the commission work, and I, and we have a couple of slides to update you. It's a little bit of a repetition, perhaps for some on things that you already know, but also perhaps some new and updated information. That should not take more than about 20, 25 minutes. And then the next agenda item is simply to turn it over to you and um, address any questions that you may have. And I really mean any. Uh, Statistical Commission is a broad event. There's the formal side, there are side events, there are preparations in terms of statements. There's what happens after the commission with the report. So let me say we will address the entire life cycle of the Statistical Commission and uh, any question is legitimate because the one thing we all want is I think in these moments of crisis and challenges uh, we want to work together, be connected as a global statistical community and uh, uh, show the world that we are standing together in solidarity and moving things forward in our domain. So without much further ado, um, I'm turning over the microphone to my dear colleague Linda, who is my right hand on all issues related to the Statistical Commission, and I'm sure you know her email address very well. And uh, she will start with the presentation, and I think I will take over at some point in the middle, and then we will address all of your questions, as I said. So, Linda, welcome again. Thank you for coming and connecting and being so engaged, especially in these difficult times, and helping us to making it up as we go along and making it all happen. Linda, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Stefan. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It's nice to um, be here today to help share some information about the commission and talk to you. Uh, Pio, can you advance two slides? Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so this short presentation will provide you with some, some uh, background on what we've been doing. It will uh, provide some logistical in arrangement information, um, an update on, on written statements, um, and some information regarding the process. Next slide, please. So we've we've held 22 side events um, as of yesterday. 
this is, I guess, the 23rd side event. Um, we have 40 more side events that will be organized over the coming weeks, and that includes, um, I think it's seven that are happening after the commission. So there's a lot of a lot of um, opportunities to to attend and learn about the work the work that we're doing, um, and, and the whole community is doing. Uh, one one event I'd like to draw your attention to is the high level event next Wednesday. Um, at 8 a.m. Um, that event will focus on the national statistical systems response to COVID-19. Uh, for further information on all the different side events, please see the website here on the slide. Um, next slide, thank you. Um, so during the commission, we have agenda items for discussion and for information. This year, we have 13 uh, discussion items covering a wide spectrum of topics. Um, work before the commission includes the system of environmental economic accounting, a framework for international migration, data stewardship, the handbook on management and modernization of statistical systems, launching of a collaborative on administrative data, a guidebook on data disaggregation, among many other topics and work that has been done that will be before the commission. Next slide, thanks. Um, we after the after the first global chat, we prepare to frequently ask questions because we receive many, many of the same questions. So there's information on registration, uh, the platform, written statements, side events, similar to what we'll be presenting today, but it gives some more detail, and that will be updated as we have new information. Um, next slide. So we have talked, we have raised to your attention many, many times the need to register for the commission. And we have, I mean, this is a normal process that has to be done, but this year it's especially important for countries to register through their permanent missions to the United Nations in New York. Um, the missions use a system called e-delegate, and that is um, a, that is where we have the official registration of, of delegations, and we have the email addresses, which this time is very, very key to how you can actually be part of the, the commission. Um, next slide, please. So this year we're using this year. No, we've never used a virtual platform before. So we're using the, the Interpify platform um, for the 50 second session. The platform provides simultaneous interpretation into all six official UN languages. Um, we, there will be um, onboarding sessions to familiarize delegates with how to use the, the platform. That information will be shared in the next day or two. Um, so one thing we would like to just share is that in order to reduce the stress on the virtual platform and enable all delegations to be accommodated, um, we are asking that you that delegations there will be information shared on on how delegations can join, um, so that we allow everyone to be able to take part. Um, so there will be the access links will be shared with with delegations. There's a primary or delegate link. Um, that is that is one link, and then there's also a viewer link. The delegate link is as if you were sitting at the table in conference room four, where we normally would hold the commission and pushing the button. And then the viewer link is for the supporting um, the, the colleagues who who support that that primary delegate. Um, as next slide, please. So during the the session, there is a chat window, as we have in all of these online platforms that we're all very very familiar with at this point. Um, that is that window can be used to communicate with the secretariat. Um, as usual, and as we have we have done for many years, we have, the commission meetings will be webcast on UNTV. Um, this allows for a much larger larger audience to follow the session, um, and that 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 information will be posted on the um, commission's website when we have that the link. Um, and then this leads me to, um, to, to, I'll hand it over to Stefan in a second. So, um, as we all know, this year's scaled down format on a virtual platform with only a 2 hours each day of the commission does not will not provide the space for our usual robust discussions that we have. Um, so we're encouraging this year written statements to be submitted on the different, um, items of the commission. Um, and we would we would we're encouraging them to be submitted by the end of this week. Um, so I'm going to now hand it over to Stefan, who will go further into information on written statements and the process. Thank you. Unmute button. Thank you, uh, Linda, for giving us this overview. Um, let me just come back to uh, one point that is really perhaps the most important point right now. Um, 
and I apologize. I had to step away, not because I'm not interested in the statistical commission, but I had to get my glasses to read the small print on the slides that my staff, my, my so much younger staff prepared. Um, so um, the one thing that we are saying and repeating perhaps ad nauseum right now is register, register, register. And uh, it, this is really very important because uh, we cannot give you uh, access to the platform if we do not have your information. And uh, if somebody asks for the floor and um, we need to have also a list uh, to uh, uh, verify that that person is a legitimate participant in our event. Uh, if we suddenly get a request from Rudy in Utopistan, uh, I have to have quickly a, a way of checking whether that person is it's, it's a legitimate delegation and that person is actually speaking for that delegation. So it is important to realize and we, we, we do have technical challenges uh, that there will be only one person preferably uh, speaking per delegation, country delegation and uh, also international agencies and other partners that we have in the room. I know that some delegations have uh, uh, the habit of having, of course, several experts in the, in the, in the delegation and sometimes passing the floor to uh, the head of economic statistics or the person who is really responsible for census or whatever the topic may be. Uh, but we may have very limited possibilities this year. We can really only provide a, an, an official microphone access link for one and then uh, definitely for a second person, the so-called viewer access that is important because then you can uh, may not be able to be given the microphone. And let me be very clear, you cannot unmute yourself. Uh, that is what just happened. I just had a pre-taste of statistical commission experience because when I opened my WebEx this morning, I said uh, I saw a message that uh, I could not unmute myself unless the host, which are my dear colleagues in the background, allow me to do so. Well, that will be the same with the Statistical Commission platform. You can unfortunately not unmute yourself. You will have to ask for the floor. The technician has to find you in the list um, of authorized speakers and then the chair can give you the floor and then it will take a minute, not a minute, uh, but probably 20 seconds. I've just been through an Interprefy meeting with the uh, uh, a group of Arab countries. So I think the Arab countries among us are the most experienced how this works. There is a little moment, there's a little bit delay before your uh, microphone comes on on your screen. And then I think you have a choice uh, to activate your video or to just speak through audio. That is your choice. Um, but it will take a moment. So we have to all be very, very patient. The system is a bit slow in that sense. And we want to still see that we can make uh, interventions when this is appropriate. But in this context also, um, uh, it would be good if you can let us know that you may have an intention to intervene on the certain agenda items that can give us an advance warning and we can let the technicians know. And one other trick that is very important when you sign into the Interprefy website, and I learned that uh, by some participations in some event, the etiquette that we are suggesting is when you put your name is put your country or if you represent an international organization, put that name of the organization first and then your name. So it would be, in my case, UNSD hyphen Stefan Schweinfest. That makes it much easier for the technicians to find you uh, when, when you're asking for the floor. Okay, so these were some preliminary remarks that I just didn't want to forget. Um, if we actually, if you could help me with, the, uh, with going back in the slides to that page of the Interprefy, um, yes, this one. It's actually a really, it's very small print and I certainly can't read it even with my glasses, 
but uh, we will uh, we will distribute this information and there will be also these onboarding sessions where people can learn how to use the platform. As I said, it's fairly intuitive. For instance, on the upper left hand corner where it says one, you have a choice of language that is very important. Um, and then uh, uh, where it says two, that is you can raise a hand, and three is the microphone, and four is the camera. And at the bottom, on the right hand bottom, uh, there is the chat function. So it is pretty intuitive, uh, also pretty much in sync with other kinds of platforms we are all using at this moment. So, um, but as I said, we will send out material so that you can make yourself familiar. Look at these things. Uh, some of you may have used the platform already. And uh, there will also be so-called onboarding slash training sessions. And the professionals from Interprefy are, are really very professional and very patient. They even taught me and I'm not the world's most savvy internet uh, IT user. OK, let's go forward a little bit in our presentation then, perhaps to the page where, yep, this is our famous Statistical Commission uh, website. I hope this is your lifeline. It has, in addition to all the things that we have in the past, our regular documentation and, and background information on previous sessions and the history and whatever. It has, of course, additional features this year, which are the statements that will be uh, uploaded and uh, also frequently asked questions questions and answers are also there so i think this could we really encourage everybody to use our website extensively so then next slide thank you now we're coming to the written statements and again it is unfortunate that we cannot use the statistical commission for the lively exchange that we normally have we will only have at best 20 minutes for each agenda item and you do the math uh, if we allow normally statements of two, three minutes uh, with an oral introduction and the summary that has to be given for each agenda item that gives us at best uh, space for a handful of delegates to intervene orally at, um, at the actual session. So the place for these oral interventions where you as a country or as a group of countries, and I want to acknowledge our friends in the regional commissions who have been helping us to facilitate the consultations among groups in the regions uh, to arrive at joint statements. But the way for you to take the floor and to press the microphone really are the written statements. And so, we have encouraged you time and again to submit your written statements and please preferably in English, but of course, as you are normally allowed to speak in your original, I mean, UN official language, if we receive statements in UN official languages, we will try to translate them, but of course we have very little uh, capacity. So to the extent possible, if you can submit them in English, but if you have really difficulties to make your voice heard, this is important for us to make the commission transparent and inclusive and participatory. With the written statements, we, you will go on record and that record is on our website and it's there to stay. You can always look at it back even in years to come, what was mentioned in these written statements. So um, why written statements? I um, mean, it provides an opportunity for delegations to contribute to the substantive di discussions as you would take the microphone. Um, we are asking you in our forum, and we have now received a number of written statements uh, to refer to a specific agenda item. And of course, we are asking you to please uh, submit them through um, the head of your delegation or a designated, clearly recognizable uh, a representative who is authorized. It may, it may sound silly, but I mean, I as we are dealing with 193 member states, if I suddenly or we get a, a an email that says this is the written statement from Maria from Utopistan, again, um, I, I, I want to have some degree of confidence that this comes from an authoritative source. You also don't want somebody to play games with us and send us a, a, a written statement. 
um, uh, that that doesn't actually come from your country. I mean, we have a fairly open and transparent process, and so so please help us and don't be angry with us if we double check because we want to really make sure that this is a proper substantive uh, a statement. We haven't had any problems so far, but sometimes if we are this year a little bit more uh, rule oriented or emphasizing certain things that may seem trivial to to you. Um, please understand where we are coming from. Um, the submission of the written statements, uh, why do we ask you to send them to us by this coming Friday? Um, the documents have been out for several weeks now, so we hope that you have had an opportunity with your staff to look at the documents, to look at the points for discussions and make your interventions. So I think we hope that this was a sufficient process. But I mean, what happens now is if um, we want to look at all of these statements and see whether we can come, whether the community, you out there, actually there is overwhelming consensus or whether there are issues to be resolved. Because if there are issues to be resolved, we will not have time in the 20 minutes and so going back and forth when this is on the official agenda. So if uh, uh, a few countries tell us uh, the SNA should be reviewed by 2025 and some other countries tell us it should certainly not be reviewed before 2027, then we have a problem. What do we write in the report? What is the consensus? So what we can do then if we know your positions early is we can connect those countries. It's not us who decide. The Secretariat does not decide. I mean, we want to facilitate an exchange between the countries and it may happen that next week we come back to you and, and say to you, you send us a written statement, you made that proposal, but that seems to be contrary to what another delegation proposed or another group of countries proposed. Can we organize a quick um, phone call between us and, uh, and, and brainstorm about possible refinements of your statements, clarifying where you are coming from, what is your concern, and what is a possible consensus that we could uh, reflect in our report at the end of the meeting. And then when we come to the agenda item, we already have a better understanding what, what are our margins of maneuver, where can we already perhaps make proposals for a consensus if the written statements point into different directions and we want to do we want to do both things we want to capture the broad view of countries around the world and there may be it's quite normal that there may be different concerns and different views so the hence the written statements but at the end of the day we need to arrive at some kind of action oriented consensus to move our global program forward so that's why we are asking you to please help us to send us our your written statements early. We have asked for this Friday. We, we know there may be the one or the other coming late, and I can assure you we will not. If it comes from a legitimate source, uh, we will always uh, take your uh, written statements into um, account. But it is a little bit like boarding an airplane. I mean, um, um, if 300 people are coming late for boarding the airplane, you will not be able to board them all at the same time uh, and have the plane take off on time. Um, if many people come on time, the, uh, and then there are a few who have legitimate reasons to perhaps be late, then the community can accommodate that. So this is a very similar situation. And so. Um, so the forms, uh, the information on the forms is on the website, send it to our secretariat, Linda Hooper here or Lee Wang, who everybody knows because she has been responsible for the Statistical Commission since even before my time. Uh, and she still looks as young as she looked when I first met her. Um, so all the forms that we receive and we have identified as legitimate, um, we will upload them as soon as we can on the website and you will find uh, a number, quite a number of uh, forms already uh, written, uh, uh, loaded up there. 
And we invite you now also, of course, to read them. I mean, especially those agenda items that you are interested in, because this is your equivalent of listening to the statements of your peers uh, over the next week. OK, next slide. OK, now how are we going to manage the actual commission week? Um, let me emphasize one one point again. I mean, you submitting to us a written statement is the equivalent of you taking the microphone in the statistical commission session. So there is no need to read the statement and uh, um, uh, during the actual session. In a way, if we receive about 200 to 300 statements, which is what I expect, uh, per country, per agenda item. Uh, if you just imagine if those statements were read and it would take like four minutes uh, to read each statement with 250 uh, uh, statements, then we have a thousand minutes of statistical commission already taking place before the statistical commission even starts. Um, so uh, uh, these written statements are, are made so that in the actual session, we can really focus very quickly to zoom in on the, on the summary and on the report writing. So this is how we are going to do the actual session. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the two hours from 9 to 11. Uh, Monday, we have a little bit of an opening. Our Assistant Secretary General, Maria Francesca Spato-Lisano, will come and address us. The election of officers and the adoption of the agenda will have actually already taken place because we do that in a so-called silence procedure, and this will be sent out tomorrow because the meeting, as we are connected informally, does not have the authority to take any formal decisions. And the election of officers and the adoption of the agenda are formal decisions. So we have to move that ahead of the commission. So tomorrow, uh, the chair of the commission, uh, Mr. Shigeru Kawasaki, uh, will write a letter to all delegations proposing the uh, new officers slate, the election of the new officers, the adoption of the agenda and the time plan and the program of work, as it is called, and the um, accreditation of partner agencies non, um, uh, that are uh, normally part of our discussions, like the ISI. Um, so on Monday morning, we will move through these procedural parts quite quickly. And then we have quite uh, have a number of agenda items from the discussion uh, items 3, A, B, C, or even more on Monday morning. And when we go to any agenda item, what will happen, there will be the usual uh, introduction. So whoever was responsible for the report, whether it was a secretariat or an in international agency or a country, um, they will present the report and then we will open the floor. We will have about 15 minutes for debate. And then at the end of the agenda item, we, the secretariat will make the summary. And we will, of course, start to work on the summary based, based on your written statements already next week ahead of the commission because, of course, we will not be able to make an ad hoc summary and the richness of the discussion will have already been preempted through your written um, statements. Um, we, this is how we are going to do basically Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. On Wednesday, we have also, apart from the discussion, um, items, the information items, but we will really not have time to go into into details there. Uh, the information items are as part of the reform, um, really for information only to save us time, even on a regular year. And I usually make a UNSD program statement, but I promise you I will keep that also very short, highlighting some of the key programmatic challenges that I feel I need to share with you also how the UN functions and what is key information at this moment that determines and influences my program apart from your programmatic oversight, evidently. And then it's Wednesday, 3, uh, 3rd March, 11 o'clock in New York. And we will have had all the discussion items. We will have had 13 summaries of the discussion items. 
And we will put all of these together with the rapporteur sitting in New York on the afternoon of Wednesday, the 3rd of March. And then this is important. We will send you the uh, draft report, which is based on the, all of those summaries that we made after each agenda item. So you will receive that on Wednesday afternoon, early evening, New York time, which will be Thursday morning for many of you. And then you will have barely 24 hours. So that's where the Thursday, the 4th is not really a day off to look at those summaries and send us any concerns, questions, proposals, preferably editing proposals to make the report better, more in line with what you heard. We encourage you to be mindful of uh, the community's position. This is not a moment to put your own individual position back into the report. You will have had an opportunity to read all of the written statements of everybody else and listen to what was said at the meeting and help us understand which is really the core, the consensus. And I think that should be encapsulated by a report. And I hope our report can be much shorter this year. It can be really very much action oriented um, so that we can also more easily agree on what are the key issues really that the community agrees on and, and, and wants to move forward. So then you send that back uh, to us and we will incorporate that into the into the draft report. We as the secretariat do not have the authority to to reject or approve any proposals for the report. We will just put it in the report and we will produce a second and that is new a second version of the report, which is the so called bracketed version and that one you will get on Friday morning. So you will have that in your hands when we connect on Friday morning at 9 o'clock and then we have 2 hours to go through the report of the Commission in the usual fashion. Uh, and read it together section for sec section by section. And then you will have highlighted in the version that is before you already some suggestions that came from from your group from the peers. And um, if they are straightforward suggestions, as many of them are, it's probably it's very often pretty easy to agree. If there are conflicting suggestions, we already have 24 hour warning. We may give you a phone call on Thursday evening or Friday morning and say you made a proposal for the report, but somebody else made a different proposal for this report. Could you two talk to each other and perhaps come back to the floor with the joint proposal just as we do in the real meeting when sometimes some of you step out to the Viennese cafe and look at the language and work with each other and step to the back of the room and resolve a problem in the report. So we are trying to to bring in as many features of our normal meeting as we possibly can. So this slide summarizes again and I'm going in a little bit more detail on the report writing because this is ultimately the most important thing that we will do at the Statistical Commission. Again, here are the key dates. Wednesday the 3rd of March, the draft decisions on of the uh, Commission will be available online for comments. By 2 o'clock our time, on Thursday afternoon, we hope that you would have sent us any suggestions on language, on editing, on corrections uh, in the draft report. Then we will put that all together and we'll make public again the so called bracketed version of the draft decisions, which will be the same that you that you see on Wednesday evening but with all the co comments and suggestions made by you, the member states. And here I want to be honest with you. Um, if we get 150 editing suggestions on the report, it will be almost impossible to read the bracketed version of the draft decisions. So we ask you for your discretion. Um, don't worry about editing changes. English language editing will be automatically done by the by the editors of the report and the UN procedure. 
and please focus only on the critically important issues and make as specific language proposals as you can, as you usually do in this paragraph 3F in the second line, include the following three words or something like that. I think that will be easy to deal with uh, for us as a community as we read the report together on Friday then. Um, but if there are, of course, very elaborate uh, changes or additions, and so uh, it will be, and, and, they are, and there are many of those, and let's say, I just want to make this up, our report that normally has 15 pages is suddenly 25 pages because with the addi additional language that is being proposed, um, that would be a problem. So I, I, I appeal to you to really only address those issues that are really, really critically important from your point of view and where you feel that the discussions in the written statements and on the floor is not properly reflected in the report and that it is important to make a correction. So I mean, but uh, focus on the key issues, please. Then on Friday in the two hours, we will do what we do always on Fridays of the Commission. We will read the report paragraph by paragraph and iron out the language. And then there's one last little uh, thing that is different. We cannot gavel the report again when we are sitting together in an informal way. We do not have the authority to take a formal decision. So we can agree on the report and we would have to do that because if we can't agree on Friday on the report, then we enter a very dangerous realm of written negotiations over the coming week. And I don't even want to go there because that could be very easily become a very difficult and open-ended uh, uh, discussion. And it would be very unfair because it would be very difficult to bring everybody back to the table and make sure that everybody is, is part and witness of our report writing. So I really urge us as a community to be very disciplined and finish the report by 11 o'clock on that Friday. And then it has to go through the so-called silence procedure. Then we have to send it out. This is ECOSOC rules and leave it out there for three days uh, for possible objections. And if there are none, then by the Wednesday after the Statistical Commission, that would be around the 10th or so uh, uh, of March, our job would be done and we would have an adopted Statistical Commission report. So I went through this in a lot of detail, but I think it's it's really also fair and important that everybody understands exactly uh, how how this works. So next slide, um, which is already the last slide. So this is good. Um, so uh, communication and engagement is key. I hope I'm not getting on your nerves with my weekly updates, but I think we are. It is important for us to keep you fully informed on the latest developments. And um, please watch out for one important piece that is the forthcoming information on the platform and the connectivity. And I think that's everything we wanted to share from our side. Let me then just open the floor for any kind of questions. And there are two ways you can ask questions. Either you can raise your hand and, and ask the question uh, through this platform, WebEx, everybody, I think, is now very familiar or type them into the chat. And I'm having my, my colleagues watching the chat, helping us to understand. Linda, uh, you were looking at the chat. Was there perhaps already a question that came in or something that you, you can add or clarify from what has come in in the, in the meantime? Sure. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um. So in the chat, some of the... Uh, questions that we have um, are related to uh, taking the floor and um, we and Stefan went through and explained the process of, of pre uh, sh telling us ahead of time that you wish to take the floor. Um, um, there was a Italy asked that um, in a delegation, if there's a person who's going to speak on behalf of a report. Um, but they're not the head of delegation. How do you communicate that? And with that, we would we would be in communication with you to know for the introducers of reports um, who they are, so that the the we include that information in the list of of speakers. Um, sorry, there's 
um, there's a question regarding represent represented how how it is determined who is the representative or designated official, um, and that is uh, what you share with the permanent missions as as we've requested you to register through your your permanent mission. So it's it's who you designate in in that document. Um, in some cases, as as was asked, sometimes the colleague who will take the floor, the delegate who will take the floor is not necessarily the head of a delegation. And we just need to know that ahead of time. So as Stefan said, there's a very long list as we have here in, in WebEx of speakers. And um, we we then pre-identify. So somebody's there clicking the button and giving the floor and taking the floor. Um, and we just need to know that information ahead of time for those purposes. Um, so I those are the questions. Sorry, that was. Thank you, Linda. Um, Let me just go back to one point, and I think where this is coming from, and I think our colleagues or friends from Denmark and, and Italy were, were asking this. Uh, if somebody in your delegation, for instance, is the head of a working group in the United Nations, who's not the chief statisticians, and that person would want to make an intervention or is is is. Uh, is is perhaps in a better position to speak about a particular topic than e the, even your chief statistician. I'm on dangerous ground here. I don't want to insult the chief statisticians. All chief statisticians in the world are, of course, so wise that they could talk on any topic wisely. But you may still want to delegate it to one of your uh, um, uh, delegation members. Just let us know ahead of time so that we can tell the technicians on the big data there is probably Denmark going to ask for the floor and it's not going to be the chief statistician but it's that person who actually has a leading role in the UN working group and then if we know that ahead of time that that is going to be extraordinary well oh, helpful so then we are not just scrambling in the back and please remember we are not sitting together in New York either as a team you can see Linda has a different background than I have. We will all sit in, in 20 different places in New York. Um, some of the tech, uh, me at home, my staff at home, the technicians at their home. Um, so uh, we also need to try and I, I've learned to 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 manage a platform and check my WhatsApp messages at the same time and the chat. Uh, so we try to be as helpful as possible, but the, the, the very simple principle is the more we know ahead of time, the easier it is for us, whatever it is, to help solve the problem. Okay, I see, uh, did I see a hand up? Is there any hands up? Do I see Andre? So I I thought I saw that, but I don't see it any. I don't see him anymore. I think. Do I see Ivan as a hand? Ivan, are you? Can you hear me? Can you? Ivan Snow from Surina. Okay. Thanks Thank you. Oh, great! We can hear your voice. How are you? Yeah. Uh, I'm doing fine. Nice to see you all, even if it's virtually. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I sent something on the on the chat, but it was not read out. So what I I am asking is if we could be a little bit more specific about the, the times on Wednesday and Thursday when the draft reports will be available. And since I have the floor, allow me to say to make a, a second statement. Mm -hmm. If we have consensus about uh, the draft report, then surely the only thing we will be talking about a little bit is, is uh, like minor editorial stuff. However, if there is disagreement uh, about what is to be included in the report, I would say this has nothing to do with personal views because sometimes we just get regional positions or organizational views, and then we have to try to, to reach uh, consensus, which we normally do. Okay, that's it. Please, can I get my first question answered? Uh, thank you, Ivan. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, 
perhaps we can go back to the, your question was, I think, on the report uh, mechanisms. No, then perhaps uh, my colleagues can help me to go back to that particular slide, which starts with Wednesday, the 3rd of March. Yep, wonderful. Great. Thank you. OK, it is Wednesday, the 3rd of March. Uh, it is 11 o'clock in New York, and we have completed the three sessions to discuss all the agenda items up and until agenda item six, I believe. Yeah, so um, then it's 11 o'clock. We will have just discussed a few items that morning so my colleagues need to be able to write that report and put it together and we have to sit with the rapporteur because the report is owned by the rapporteur get the rapporteur's green light so i i didn't put an exact time there because uh, i mean there are a couple of things uh, but i can assure you that by wednesday afternoon as quickly as we possibly can get all the pieces of the report of the informal draft report which is very much that paper that you know that says decision 101 decision 102 etc cetera, etc cetera, that we get it together and get it approved by our rapporteur and then we will put it out publicly. We will put it on the web page. So that would be um, Wednesday afternoon. I would hope that by, let's say, five o'clock or so New York time, we can at the latest do that. Um, I think this is interesting for our colleagues in the in the Americas because they can still watch for it on that particular day. For most other parts of the world, I would say it is already Tuesday, Thursday morning, um, even if we get it done in the afternoon. So for Europe, Africa and Asia, I would say look for it first thing on your Thursday morning. Then the next timestamp is 2 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, by that time, uh, the, um, we want to have corrections back so that we can. This is not your last chance to intervene on the report. I mean, because we will discuss it on Friday. But again, the Secretariat wants to provide services to identify for the Friday session, which are the points where we have perhaps disagreement and, as you rightly say, need time to resolve the disagreement. So we are asking for your comments, your first cut of comments back on the report corrections. I should not say comments because it should be really corrections. Uh, by 2 p.m., which is leaves um, uh, Europe, Africa and Asia most of Thursday to send it basically back by their close of business on Thursday for the Americas who have the advantage of getting it probably on Wednesday evening. They have a little bit of a tighter deadline because it's the early afternoon on Thursday. So then what happens on Thursday? Then the Secretariat will sit together and put all the comments into that draft report. And we will do that together with the report with the rapporteur. And I would ask for your uh, I would suggest that if they are straightforward um, editorial improvements of the language and the rapporteur approves it immediately we just put that into the report highlighting it still in a color or underlining it or we will still make that clear for everybody where there was a change in the report but um, we are some of the more straightforward things where the rapporteur is in agreement because it's it's the report of the rapporteur the rapporteur owns the draft report uh, can implement some of the proposed changes immediately. So what we were trying to do is then to put in brackets those proposals that we believe need further or the rapporteur believes need further consideration on Friday. And I would hope that if you look at the decisions and there would be 13 decisions, which is one per discussion item, that we could limit it to perhaps have one maximum two bracketed spaces per decision where we then on Friday when we uh, we would then put that back out there and that would be our Thursday evening after having gone through it combed through it with the rapporteur and we would put out that bracketed uh, uh, version on Thursday evening um, and um, uh, sorry, I just got a message who is asking for the floor. Thank you. 
and Thursday evening, which is then Friday morning uh, for most of the rest of the world. And then we would use that bracketed version to go through it on Friday. I hope that clarifies it very much. Yvonne, is that is that OK with you? Yeah, thank you. I see you nodding. And sorry, the uh, your second question was, yeah, to resolve uh, uh, possible disagreements. Yes, I, I totally agree. I mean, people sometimes uh, it is not. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that um, um, you're not allowed uh, to bring back aspects that you presented and you may have very well presented on behalf of a regional mechanism and you feel that they have not been captured in the report, absolutely, that should be uh, brought back. Uh, with, with a little proviso though, I mean, you also listen to the rest of the discussion. Uh, if there were voices uh, in, the, in perhaps other regions who had uh, a different view, um and perhaps provided a good justification for that you may be content of having raised the issue in your written statement and as i said that the written statements are up for eternity there so that uh, some people uh, who raise concerns um this is very well reflected then but it may not be part of the consensus because the overwhelming majority noting that concern is still willing to go ahead in a particular direction and i think that's our job as a community to find that consensus with the report so i hope that but i hope we will have of course on friday we will have two hours and normally we, we it takes us about two hours because on a normal friday in the statistical commission we have some other items at 10 o'clock and then we give the delegations half an hour to read the draft report remember you have a lot more time this year you actually have two days almost to read the draft reports. Normally when you are in the session, you will only get the draft report uh, like in half an hour before we ask you for your intervention. So I think this is a lot more, we're trying to be more serviceable this year. We hope we will not be get punished in the sense that we then get into too many details because the perfect, even in terms of the report, is the enemy of the good. Um, so yes, that's on the topic, um, but two hours on Friday should be enough. And we have moved all of the other agenda items, even my statement, program statement into Wednesday, hopefully, so that we can dedicate the full two hours on Friday to resolve all of the bracket issues in the report. And any other issues, I mean, on Friday, literally, I mean, on, I'm, I'm also, just to be uh, clear, uh, if you haven't raised an issue, uh in your thursday response you can still raise it on friday on friday is still the report discussion and maybe you want to refine your uh, first submission or you want to modify it or uh, um and even raise a new one procedurally we cannot stop you from that but of course if on friday a number of delegations raise new issues that makes the life for the chair and the secretariat infinitely more uh difficult especially uh, if they are controversial because i mean we have very limited resources to resolve controversy okay um I think there were three uh, requests for the floor. Uh, I think uh, one was from uh, Raja Altav. I need to go to another platform to actually see who else. Yes. Yeah, Raja, yes hello. please. Yes, hello. Good morning and good evening. Hi. And thank you for this informative session. Uh, this is Raja Altav from the General Authority for Statistics in Saudi Arabia, uh, International Relations Department. So I wanted to ask you, is there a, a, a limit to the number of the viewers? And do we need to register them uh, before? Uh, and the last question, regarding the written statements, do we need to submit all of the statements or only the ones that we will be choosing to speak on? Thank um, you. Thank you for this question. Um, this is a very important question. So the, the first question, there is no limit to your delegation, but of course, as we explained, there are differences within your delegation. There will be a head of the delegation submitting statements, possibly speaking at the event. Um, 
and then there will be uh, probably one viewer on the platform and everybody else will have to possibly refer to the UN webcast um, and the UN webcast is open to everybody. I mean, uh, and it's up to you whether you want to put the names of your staff on the list of participants, which will be reflected as part of the report. Or uh, if you want to invite additional staff, junior staff, uh, perhaps even from other institutions uh, in your country uh, for information purposes to watch the statistical commissions, there are no limits on the UN webcast. So, uh, but we need to have one or two key names with whom we can interact. So that is the first question. And the second question is very important. It's good that you asked, you asked it, thank you. Um, yes, we need all the written statements now. And I want to strongly discourage you from taking the floor unless there is a real reason for taking the floor because we simply do not have the time. And we do not want to put the, sec the chair in a position of refusing the floor to a delegate, but because of time management reasons, he may well have to do that. So if you really want to take the floor, it should have a very specific reason. I mean, it should not be just to reflect your position. You have already taken the floor through your written statement. If you send us five written statements on uh, five agenda items from with your position from Saudi Arabia, that is very much appreciated. But that is the equivalent of you having five times taken the floor in New York. If you then want to take the floor again, it would have to be for a very specific reason. And for instance, the reason to help us resolve a discrepancy in positions uh, that we have under this agenda item. It would certainly not be to reflect your national position. We will simply not have time in the Statistical Commission session to do that. Um, the only thing we can do in those 20 minutes that we have under each agenda item is really listen to some key uh, positions and you can do the math if we have four or five interventions that we can actually have on the each agenda item. There will be a total of a 13 discussion item of 65 uh, possible speaking slots. That means that really every delegation at best can speak once during the statistical commission session. Um, that's why we have opened this mechanism of the written statements and that's why we want to have all the written statements ahead of time. And then if, if a written statement reflects, for instance, the position of a region, you increase the likelihood that the chair will give you actually the floor to make that statement. Uh, because of course that would be it carrying much more weight than um, a national position. Uh, and of course your interventions are always welcome if we get stuck between conflicting views to help us uh, intervene and make a proposal for resolution of this issue, not to reflect a national position, but to help the community to actually move to a consensus. I hope that uh, that was clear. Uh, let me double check on my list of speakers. Rizenga, I have a request from you for the floor. Uh, very much. Uh chairperson and uh, of the current session and indeed greetings to all the friends i think the point that was raised by raja uh, 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 the, the the recent speaker at uh, the second question is one part that i wanted to raise but uh, then uh, the second part which is not a question it's more of a comment is that uh, we will be steering in a new culture chair and the culture is that we are using technology rather than meeting in person and uh, when you combine new platforms and technology together with protocols because there are a lot of protocols that we must uphold writing statements up front making sure that we are much more prepared uh, a lot more earlier than the actual commission uh, it does uh, mean that uh, there will be some of the things that we may 
lose out, especially for, uh, I will use his name because he won't beat me up. My friend, Mr. Snow, who would want to add something from the floor. Uh, we will not have that opportunity, uh, including myself. So what I'm saying is that we might want to uh, work a, lo a lot more tighter between today and the 19th, uh, including if there are things that we you are seeing from the Secretariat side on agenda items that we are not giving much attention to, so that we don't leave anything to chance, so that our meeting is a great success, even in reflected in the minute that we'll produce. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Rezenga, for your uh, 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 um, support. It, it is true. Uh, I mean, I, I, I feel very much like a taskmaster here right now. And I, to be honest with all of you, is not, is not one of my favorite positions. Uh, it's not my nature. I wish we would have a lot more interactive and uh, pleasant uh, exchanges. I think the Statistical Commission is also always a moment where we get to know each other and uh, we start respecting, understanding different cultures and where people from a very different part of the world come from and, and what unites us and, and, and where there are legitimate differences because people are, are struggling with different cultural and um, legal and traditional institutional uh, realities. So that richness will be a little bit lost this year. We have tried our best by opening doors with the side events where we have very lively exchanges. I've enjoyed quite a number of the side events. Uh, we would still also have the chat as a, mo uh, as a mode of intervention, of commenting on something that is ongoing, if you strongly agree or disagree with a speaker. So the chat is an important uh, avenue also of interaction during the meeting. And we have, I have designated chat watchers. I invented a new job for younger people. They only stare uh, on the chat and note everything down and will give it to me and the chair so that we can pay attention to these things. So we're trying to use all elements of new technology, but it will still not be the same. I'm already looking forward to next year's commission, I must say, uh, but we must not lose sight of our collective executive task that is to come up with a report that that guides our global work the many working groups that are operating under the statistical commission there are over 40 and my work and my team because i'm taking my executive mandate from the statistical commission and so i'm very focused on the report um, it's not because i want to force consensus i just need a mandate from you. You are here at the table only once a year and then for the rest of the year I have to fend by myself and go to my authorities and say this is what the statistical community wants from me and I have the document to prove it. So thank you for understanding this uh, and supporting us in these endeavors which are not ideal, I agree, but let's please all try to make the best of it. Okay, we have additional requests for the floor. I have Naif, and then Silvis Hernandez, and then Barry Bain. I think it's good to uh, announce it ahead of time. But let's start, start with Naif. Please, if you could introduce yourself, that would be helpful. Thank you. Uh, hi, how are you? This is Naif al -Bloy. Actually, Ms. Raja, she was uh, asked all our the questions from Saudi Arabia. And that's good. Now it's clear for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Raif, and thank you for, for, for taking the floor. So the next person I had in line was Silvis Hernandez. Hi, Stefan. Hi. Good morning, everyone. This is Silvia from Dani. Um, I would like to clear all doubts about the oral statement procedure. I'm sorry if you have already answered this question, but the... Um, as, uh, the question is about the floor request. This request must be sent in a different email than the written statement. I know that uh, to submit the statement, we have to send them by email to the secretary, but I don't know if we have to send another one to request the floor. Um, 
the other question is about we must specify something else in addition to the items in which we would like to request the floor. And regarding the writing statements, um, this must be sent by the head of the delegation, or is it possible to, that this could be sent by another member of the delegation or by the permanent mission? That's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let me, yeah, I'm on mute. Yeah, uh, let me work backwards and answer your last question. Um, I would prefer if it comes from the head of delegation. Take your example. Uh, Adane, Colombia, I know Juan Daniel. If we get an email that says it comes from Juan Daniel or it is uh, on behalf of him, then we know. I don't have to check. I do not know all 193 chief statisticians on the world of the world by name. There are many that are new. Um, so I would prefer it comes from the head of the delegation, but if you are sending it officially from Dane, that would be fine. There is no need to channel it through the permanent missions. I mean, that's not the case. You're not asking your permanent mission whether if you take the floor in the room. Um, so that is not a formal requirement. You can send it directly to us or the delegation for your country uh, and you're sending those statements, um, send them directly to us. Now, you, in the same email, you don't have to send, there's not a specific um, a different format or so. You could tell us we would like to take the floor on this particular agenda item. Um, let us, but you could also send this email uh, a couple of days later if you want. But I mean, what is going to happen on our side? We will put all of the requests for the floor together and we'll review them. Now, if on one agenda item, we have 20 countries asking for the floor, we will all consult with the chair. And it is impossible to give the floor to 20 countries on the one agenda item and stay within the 20 minutes uh, time frame. So uh, we will, we may get back to you and ask you why you want to take the floor. As I said, taking the floor in the statistical commission would not be to reflect uh, your national position that has already been done in your written statements it would be we would hope that the floor uh, interventions would help us to come as quickly as possible to a summary and a consensus language and uh, if you submit a statement like for instance on behalf of a regional group i think that would be we have received one or two of that nature i think that makes a very good that makes a good sense and this is helping the time management and economy the chair and we then understand that it would be very unlikely that other countries from that region would ask for the floor and if we like have five regional statements that would be very manageable under each agenda item and so on. I don't now say that we must have a regional statement for each and every agenda item. That is also not the case in a normal statistical commission session. But let's say we have under an agenda item two or three that are regional um, coordinated positions and those in the delegations have indicated their interest to also make a statement on the floor, share that regional position. Um, then uh, I think the, uh, it would be much easier for the chair to say, okay, those are uh, requests for the floor that I will approve. Um, so let us know when, when you, if you want to speak on a particular agenda item. And as I said, I mean, you all can do the math. It is very unlikely that any delegation would speak more than once or in, 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 in these tight uh, time constraints. Um, so please don't send us a request for taking the floor on the seven agenda items. That would only embarrass the chair. Uh, because he may have to go back to you and say, no, I won't be able to give you the floor on all of these agenda items. Do you have a priority and why? What's the value added on the day of the meeting in addition to your written statement um, to make an oral intervention? So that is, that's the mechanics that we do. So let send us your written statements for first, send us in the same email or a different email next week, your interest to speak. And then we will consult with the chair. I think we have a bureau and chairs meeting on the Friday of next week, and we will go through the management of how we actually can run practically the commission. 
And it sounds all a little bit vague and unclear, but I'm doing this for the second time. And believe me, the geospatial community was very disciplined and very organized, and we did it actually very well. And we had some really good interventions and discussions in the little time that we had available. Thank you. Okay, I have Barry Bain waiting patiently. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I represent the business and industry major group. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any opportunity for major groups and other stakeholders to make submissions, to make written submissions. Why is this? Um, okay, are you accredited with the ECOSOC? Yes, we are. Well, if you are accredited with ECOSOC, you uh, you can submit uh, a statement. I mean, I think, um, uh, and we will put it at the appropriate place. I will have to get, my, I'm not a, a conference secretary, so I'm a statistician expert here, but uh, we will find uh, it is, uh, it, this is a very professional community consisting of official statisticians around the world. You will find that most people in this group uh, are representing national statistical offices but we are of course open to voices from 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 the outside world from the civil society as long as they have a formally accredited role and that is something that we would double check with uh, the, the website, services. website says that statements can only come from member states and agencies i am familiar with the operation of the statistical commission and generally major groups are allowed uh, the opportunity to to make submissions at at the statistical commission meeting but the, the website uh, offers no opportunity for this okay then we'll have to double check and allow me to to, to seek advice from our colleagues in the conference services but i mean uh, we will follow the regular un rules of who is allowed to make statements i mean this is the equivalent of taking the floor i'm not very familiar yeah. what the exact rules are with ecosoc who is allowed to, and who is given the floor normally in an ECOSOC intergovernmental meeting. But this is not, this is a formal, well, it is not fully formal in the sense that we cannot take decisions at the end, but it is an intergovernmental meeting. So we will follow the rules. Thank you very much. So maybe someone could look at the website and correct that. So, okay, so we'll, we'll major, double check no. that. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any other requests for the floor? Uh, Linda, you may have received messages whilst I'm talking or watching the chat, which I have been unable to do. Maybe there are some other points that come up uh, that you would like to address at this point. Hi, sorry, there's printing in the background, apologies. Um, I, don't, I don't see any other hands at this moment. Um, from the chat, sorry, where did the chat go? Um, so we have a, a question that was just added right now about, um, is there already a testing time for technical connections um, and to test the platform interpreting system in advance? And that um, I can answer that briefly. So that information should be shared in the in the next um, day or two. We have some some times set up in the, in or I think it's early next week um, to do those tests for the for the for the speakers. Um, sorry, I'm got lost in this list. Um, so I had there's a, a comment from the GSO uh, Vietnam. Um, that they'll be submitting their statements early next week um, because of their, their national holidays. And that's that's fine. We we thank you for letting us know. Um, is, okay, those, are there any, other, I don't see any other questions. Um, if I go back further, um, I don't, if anyone else has, that would like to raise their hand and take the floor, please let us know. I think I saw flashing something by um, if whether there is an approval of the delegations, there is not. If we uh, receive a formal request from your government that goes normally through the note verbal of your missions and you are then whatever you submit is is represents constitutes your delegation. So there is no approval. There is no way for us. Uh, for the United Nations to disapprove somebody in a delegation. Uh, so, I mean, there is no, um, 
process in that way. Written statements, as long as they are coming from a designated source that we can identify and, and verify, will be uploaded. Again, there is no uh, approval there. Um, and and um, the uh, requests for the floor, there may be an, an, a conversation. Again, there is no approval or disapproval if you are asking for the floor. Uh, that's most of the one of the most holy and fundamental rights in the United Nations uh, to do that. And uh, we will try the utmost possible to help the chair to manage the session in such a way that you can be given the floor. We may just, depending on the situation, and I really find that difficult to anticipate whether we will have next Friday uh, the, the 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 working day before the statistical commission car starts. 100 requests for the floor, which to a certain extent would be unmanageable, um, or whether we only have uh, 25 that we could, and they are well distributed and, 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 and well uh, thought through and justified uh, because you have a role as be, uh, in a UN working group or you're speaking on behalf of a region or um, uh, then, uh, uh, and there are not too many under one particular agenda item. And so then I think then we will, to the extent possible, give you, give all those who request for the floor, uh, um, we will give you the floor. We may reach out to you. So please also work with us in order to clarify. Obviously, there may be a need even over the weekend to reach out for those who are asking for the floor on Monday, and then we will we will try. And then those for Tuesday and Wednesday, we can perhaps still clarify on Monday. Maybe some of those things will become clearer how it really works when the Statistical Commission um, has started operating on Monday. Um, so perhaps we can all watch how it goes on the first day and then adjust our behavior and expectations. Um, but if you asked for the floor, um, I, I hope this is not an unmanageable promise, then we will try, we will try to get, we will get back to you to inform you whether we think it's likely that the chair will accommodate your request or whether there is an issue, whether the chair wants to have more information of, of why so many people want to take the floor under this item. It may be indicative that in the written statements there is a, a disagreement and we may rather suggest that a certain number of countries may get informally together ahead of the meeting or on the side of the meeting to resolve an issue and come perhaps quicker to a consensus uh, uh, rather than having seven, eight or nine or prolonged exchange and exchanges under an agenda item, which only squeezes then the other agenda items and makes it more difficult to complete. And with, unfortunately, I mean, <laughs> I was almost a little bit unhappy with uh, the wonderful, generous, um, interpreters in the Arab region, the statistical commission session that I attended there last week went over by about 20 minutes over the designated two or I think three hour time slot. And the interpreters in the Arab region, it was Arabic and English, were kind enough to service the meeting. I am sorry to say, I don't think that is likely to happen in New York with six languages interpretation. You know that the interpreters have been very uh, supportive and it's sometimes really tough with our specialized, highly specialized language. And so they are working very, very hard, but they are working within the designated hours so that we will get a significant extension uh, all beyond the two hours that we have every day is extremely, but I would say, and I repeat, extremely unlikely. So if we as a community cannot manage uh, our business within the set time with the tools that are given to us, um, well, then I also don't know, then we will have to improvise and see how we can uh, manage this uh, later on. But we will see over the course of the week, obviously, if there's a serious problem by Monday or Tuesday, we would sit down with the chair and the bureau and adjust the procedures as necessary. I hope that helps. I'm sharing with you also as much of my thinking and our problems and our challenges. This is sometimes maybe not a straight yes, no answer to your question, 
But I think if I share, if me as a manager share my considerations and my limitations with you, who are also all managers, I think we we jointly understand uh, uh, better what is going to happen ahead of us. Were there any additional hands at this moment? I don't see any. Uh, I see Linda is also shaking her head. Linda, were there any additional questions that we received over the... I don't see any questions that we haven't addressed, but if, if someone has something, please raise your hand and we'll give you the floor if you're interested. Okay, there was a question right now, I think, popping up in the chat. Could you please confirm that there will not be any resolution this year? Yes, I can confirm that immediately. Um, this is not the year um, we have. We use the modus of a resolution very sparingly. When I say we as a statistical community, we only send every couple of years something to ECOSOC or even to the General Assembly for further specific uh, emphasis and consideration. Our fundamental principles were adopted by the General Assembly in 2014. Our census resolution or um, uh, goes to ECOSOC. Uh, we have, uh, when there is a major, I believe in the past, when we have a major uh, new standard like the new system of national accounts that sometimes was elevated to a resolution. We did have a resolution last year because there was a specific concern of the better coordination of the UN statistical system. Uh, but that was also prepared. This year, there is no plan from our side or that we are aware of of any proposed draft resolution. And I think under the current modalities, it would be very difficult to orchestrate uh, an appropriate and fair negotiation and discussion. So the only outcome of our commission this year will be our regular report, which contains technical decisions. This is the official language. And those technical decisions, then they go to our parent body, ECOSOC, together with the request, of course, of the next meeting. And uh, one, one, one thing that we have to do, we always, uh, which is more of formality, we approve the provisional agenda for the 2022 Statistical Commission session derived from our multi-year program. Um, but then we also empower usually the Bureau to make necessary adjustments in the course of the year. So that's the level of decision making this year. There is no resolution. It's technical decisions that will be codified in our technical report. I'm glad we left so much time because I really appreciate also your questions. And I mean, you see, I see one hand. Uh, I don't even, I have to apologize. I don't see the full name. Alam Gear is MD Alam Gear. Yeah, yeah, Alam Gear Hossein. Hossein. Uh, from Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. Uh, welcome, okay. Alam Gear. Sorry, your name does not fully appear on my participant list. Okay. It's okay. Uh, 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 sorry, yeah, I missed something here. So I see that uh, you have requested to submit the forms uh, uh, in uh, PDF format, but uh, what the forms you are referring actually? So please, would you please explain again? Yeah, perhaps uh, my colleague Linda can help me with that. Yes. Um, Theo, if you go back a slide, please, another one. So this is a, a screenshot of the website, actually, um, and that's where the forms and the information can be found. Um, we have the, the, this is the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to highlight the screen and it's not my screen. Um, you, if you go to the, the website under written statements, under each agenda item, we have the form, the template that you can download, fill out, and then return to us. Does, does that answer your question? Oh, sorry, you're... We muted you, apologies. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, sorry, there, there's a question that was posted in the chat. Um, if a delegation consists of more than two representatives, how would the active participant and the viewer be chosen? Um, and this is up to up to the delegation and up to the country. We don't, um, 
we're, I mean, we, we won't tell you who to, who to choose. Um, so if, are there any other questions or pe people? Yeah, that let, let me just perhaps to follow up on this. Uh, this also has something to do that Ivan Snow, our friend and experienced commission uh, member uh, raised at the last chat. Normally, uh, there is always when you nominate a delegation for the Statistical Commission or for any UN body, there is a head of the delegation. That is always the case. I mean, this has always been in the past and the history. It's clear. It's the head of a, there is a head of a delegation. Now, there are two practices out there. Uh, some countries, and we see the nominations coming in, some countries choose the ambassador as a head of a delegation because it's just their understanding that the ambassador is the official representative at the United Nations for all topics. And that is a very uh, understandable and uh, uh, legal, legally correct uh, interpretation. The first representative of your country at the United Nations is your ambassador. That's why the invitation to the Statistical Commission, the so-called note verbal, is addressed to the ambassadors. And then, but many countries choose a system of formal delegation that uh, they say, well, the ambassador can, of course, delegate to either somebody in his or her staff or more frequently to the head of the National Statistical Office that will be traveling in the normal circumstances in and will be the person who will actually be speaking on the mostly technical topics of uh, of our commission. So if your uh, note verbal, your official in nomination includes the ambassador of the head of the delegation, but it might be un extremely unlikely for more legalistic uh, uh, reasons. And it is very unlikely that that person, this um, the lady or gentleman, would actually be participating in the meeting. Then we had clarified that sort of the technical head of the delegation would need to be clear to us because that would be the person who would, who would actually then give the microphone. Even if your official note says the head of the delegation is the ambassador, and then uh, uh, it should somewhere uh, we need to know who is uh, the person uh, that is speaking uh, technically on behalf of your delegation. I believe in many cases this is not, in, in, in many country cases, this is not an issue. It will be de facto the highest ranking representative from the National Statistical Office. That is, I would say, 99% of the countries are sort of managing it that way. But there may be special circumstances. I've been long enough in the United Nations not to assume that all 193 countries in the world are managing everything in the exact same manner. So if there are any questions, if you have any, any uncertainties uh, in this regard, please um, turn to us and we will do what we always try to do to help to solve the problem. Okay, Stefan, at this point, I don't see any additional hands raised or questions that have come in through the chat. So we can. Um, okay, then uh, I think, I think uh, we are also, we still have 139 participants. So thank you so much for giving us so much time and so much attention. Uh, it shows us uh, that um, this is important for you. And if it's important for you, it's important for us. Um, this is, of course, not your last opportunity to ask questions. So let me point out again a couple of resources. We, 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 we are very carefully, we, we did that last time. We even went back through the entire chat and looked at questions. And we looked also at questions that individual country delegates had sent to us per email. And if we thought that they were generic enough that it is very likely that many others would have similar questions, we increased in incorporated them in the question and answer or what is it called frequently asked questions or q a uh, something like that uh, on our website so if you have a question perhaps that may be a good first point to go to hopefully you would find the information there if you do not find the information there we are of course always there and i do understand that there are some country circumstances and that you may not have wanted to raise 
an issue in front of all the other countries because it's very particular specific to your country or the institution that you represent the organization um, please turn to us and we will do our best we are in full commission mode and my whole team is looking forward to this and making it as good as we possibly can giving the very exceptional uh, circumstances that we have this year so with these words i wanted to thank you again thank you for your patience thank you for for listening to us uh, putting up with us and uh, let's work all together this is our statistical commission uh, this is not a show that is only put up by the un statistics division in new york i think we we all as a global community work on this together and um, i thank you for your interest wish you and your family all the best and please be in touch with anything that is on your mind or on your heart and we will certainly try our best to address it. And if it's a very important question that you raise that is important for others, we will even put it on our website, not with your name that you asked that question, but as a generic piece of information. So I invite you also to keep uh, an eye on our side events. We have a number of really great side events coming up. I mean, there is the big side event next uh, Wednesday, I think on the, if I get this correctly, on the 24th on COVID. We also have a side event this Friday that I just wanted to bring to your attention because it's a little bit different. It's on our new global data network. Some of you may have new forms of communication in support of the SDGs. That also brings in the country teams and the wider UN system. So that is perhaps something new that has in this form not been on the agenda before. And perhaps one other a uh, side event that will actually happen after the Statistical Commission, I believe the 10th of March is designated for that, is a, a, a so-called Youth Statist Young Professional Statistical uh, Commission with the reflection of how the Statistical Commission in 2050 uh, or 51, uh, 30 years from now, is going to run. Uh, uh, how are we going to interact? Let's dream a little bit what may be the topics and so look forward. And I think that would be a wonderful opportunity for also for many of your staff to bring in perhaps younger staff to the table. And I hope you're doing this already with some of the other technical side events that we are having coming up. So please keep uh, the three things to do. Register, send your written statements, and uh, watch out for our webpage for the announcements of further side events and practical information and particularly on the platform and i think if we do that all together then we'll be in good shape so thank you to all of you uh thank you to linda and my my team in the background here uh, working very hard to make this all happen and let's stay connected and i wish you all the best and please 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 take care of yourself uh, health and well-being of you your families and your teams is always the most important thing so take care good rest of the day good afternoon good evening for wherever you are